Hey, Andrew Chelman here with the second video in my arranging tips and tricks for a machine. So as a quick recap, in the last video I went over how to create interesting patterns. And now these patterns will be put to good use. So when you're arranging you want to have an idea of what you want to create, sort of an overall goal in mind. Now if you're working with a vocalist, they're probably going to have some structure that you should follow. Maybe they'll tell you how many verses they want, how many choruses they want, and how long each of those parts should be. But if you're like me and you're just working on an instrumental project, you have the freedom to do whatever you want. As an added challenge though, with instrumental music you have to keep the listener interested and engaged because the lyrics aren't going to be distracting them. So that will be my overall goal, create an interesting and engaging track to listen to. So with that in mind, we can start arranging. So I'll start here with my first scene. I'm just going to call this scene the intro scene. And for my sample, I have a dedicated pattern that will fade the automation out towards the end. So I'll select that. And if you, if you can't remember what this does, it's just the filter starting engaged at the beginning, and it slowly fades out at the end, and that will um, sort of fade into a more developed sounding pattern that will, um, that will start after the intro. Moving on to the drums, we can create a intro pattern here. Um, and this is just some hi-hats and then a kick and a snare. Now you don't have to have a dedicated intro pattern, but for drums I like to sort of give a, um, a taste of what's to come. So this isn't fully developed at all, but is um, a little bit more smooth of transition rather than just having the drums come in all at once. So um, with that I will um, finish up my intro scene. Now we can move on to the main section. So in my sample here I'm going to select my pattern that just has no automation happening. It's just playing, um, playing everything exactly how it sounds. In my drums, I will select the one with a crash at the beginning because I like to have a crash symbol to kind of uh, signify the start of a new section. Now the instruments here, I'm just going to choose uh, just bass here. Now this isn't actually the full developed bass line that will eventually come in. You can kind of see um, some of the notes are just blocked out. I don't have the, the filler notes in here, so this is kind of a simplified version, but it's just something to come in and keep the listener interested. So that I'll call my main one. I'm going to right click and duplicate this scene and this will just give me a, a template to work from. So I will leave the sample playing exactly the same. The drums I'm going to switch to the pattern without the crash symbol. If you have a crash symbol playing on every first beat, it can get a little bit repetitive. So I'll take that off and um, I'll leave the bass playing here. Now usually you want to avoid having um, the same thing play over and over. Even, um, even having two scenes in a row can be kind of uh, repetitive. But since the bass just came in back here, and since each pattern is only four bars long, I think I can get away with having a total of eight bars of um, essentially the same sound. So I think that is all right for our second one. Again, I'll right click and duplicate. Um, I'll leave this the same. I'll change the drums to the one with the crash symbol um, just to switch things up. And now I don't want to have the, the bass line play the exact same for three patterns in a row. So I will bring in the electronic piano. So that'll be something new for the listener to kind of catch on to. Now I'll change this to main three, right click duplicate. And now I've had the, the sample playing exactly the same for uh, quite a while. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna switch this up here and do the automation fade in and fade out. And then on my drums, I'll take off the crash symbol and my instruments, I will leave the same with that bass and EP. Again, since the uh, the sample is changing and the, the bass and the EP only came in over here, um, I don't need to switch this up already, so um, I can get away with that. I'm going to change this, label that. And so now I have four scenes of this main section, so I think I want to switch it up now. So it's going to be a totally different section, so I won't duplicate just because there's no need to do that. I will select that different pattern here, and if you remember, this is a totally different sequence of these slices. And then my drums, I can select the, the fitting pattern here, the one without any hi-hats, and that uh, matches up pretty well. Now my instruments, I have a, uh, I created a pattern that has some strings at the end, and I, I labeled this as intro, but since I didn't use this at the actual introduction of the song, I think I'm going to put it in here. And this will just bring in some of the staccato strings, and um, it'll be a nice transition out of the different scene here. So if I label this up here, um, the staccato strings will carry over, and then I'll create a new scene here and work with the instruments. I will bring in um, the bass line, but this bass line has some strings at the beginning. 
So this is a neat way to sort of uh, blur the lines in between all of your scenes. So here I have the, the strings at the end and they carry over into the beginning. So rather than just having a series of sort of disjointed scenes, um, that's a neat way to uh, blur the lines and make things sound more unified. So that sounds good there. My drums, I'll go back to the crash because we're sort of uh, going to a different section. And my sample, I will choose the, the main one without any automation. And it's always a good idea to go back and listen to what you're actually doing. So um, I'll play, play this back. Open your eyes. So you can hear that transitions pretty well, and I'm pretty happy with how that sounds. So I'll go back to my main, duplicate this, and switch some things up. So um, again, follow the same process with the drums, um, keep the crash symbol from becoming too repetitive. Now we have a bass line here, I think I'll go to just the bass line um, without those strings. Here we had those strings at the beginning, but I don't want those to play here because um, it would be weird if they just played on their own, because there's nothing to lead into those. So that is good there. Duplicate this. I'm just going to keep repeating the same process. Um, go back to the drums like we've been doing. Put the crash cymbal on since it didn't play here. Now I'll bring in the EP. And let's see, this is main 3. Going to duplicate this. And now we are on our fourth one. So I'm going to mirror the, the first main section and um, select the fade in and out automation on the fourth one. And then the drums will have that one without the crash. And bass and EP will be fine playing again since um, since the sample up here is changing. So the listener will be, will be focused on that rather than the instruments. And that is our fourth one. And now we're ready to move on to the um, to that different section. So I'll use my instrument here, my dedicated different pattern for my instruments. This has those tremolo strings, so that's a totally new instrument there. My drums that fit, and my different one for the sample. So this, listen to this. So you can hear we have those staccato strings at the end like we did before, so we want to make sure those carry on through. So I'll go back to the main pattern here. The drums will have a crash cymbal. Now I think it's time to, um, to bring everything in. So I have my fully developed everything pattern here. And remember this has all my instruments. Um, the piano comes in and those strings come in and I have this, uh, this big pattern here. So that'll be main one. And when everything's playing, you can you can just duplicate that and have it play again. There's so much going on, the listener won't get bored with uh, with having this play exactly the same again. And I'll even switch up the drums just to make sure. So here's sort of like the culmination of all the patterns at this big section here. Now we'll go back to the crash symbol here. And um, I'm kind of nearing the end, I feel, so I'm going to start taking out the instruments and I'll do the um, the one with the piano, the piano notes over here. This will be main three. Duplicate this. Um, select that one without the crash. And I think I'm just going to go to the to the bass and the EP. So uh, as you start to near the end, you can take out some of those different elements. So I'm taking out some of the some of the instruments in this case, and um, you, the listener will kind of get a a hint that the song is coming to a close. So I think I'm starting near the end of my arrangement up here. I think it might be time to put in the ending scene. And um, you can see up here in the in the counter that we already have like three minutes of, of a track. And that's pretty good considering um, considering what I was working with. Um, if you're just showing bars, you can just right click on it to switch between bars and um, minutes and seconds. So that's pretty nice. I have a, a decently long track. I'm pretty happy with that. And so I think it's time to work on the ending. So I, I actually created these patterns before I, I even uh, started arranging. And this is going to be my ending pattern. And I have dedicated ending patterns for all three of my groups. And I'll walk you through how I did that. 
my slice pattern is pretty much exactly the same as my main one, except this last slice here is a little bit longer. Now my drums, I have a kick and a crash on that same beat, and my uh, my instruments, which is only the bass in this case, has um, that long note here, so we can kind of um, hear that just like here. <laughs> That slice plays a little bit longer than it ever has in the rest of the track, so it's kind of cool to hear um, kind of the context of where I sampled it from. So that pretty much finishes up the arrangement, I think. Um, not a bad length to it, almost three and a half minutes. And um, from now you can, you can uh, maybe throw some effects on the master bus. I have some um, Waves L1, some compression on there. And once you're, f um, once you're happy with how it sounds, you can select the whole thing. Um, either by moving this bar with your mouse or just double clicking up in the area between the labels and the actual scenes or in the actual patterns. So double click up there, it's going to select your whole track and then you can go file, export audio, um, select where you want to do it, you can mess with these options and that will give you a finished WAV file and you can upload it to SoundCloud or YouTube or anything like that. That'll just give you a nice audio file to work with. So that concludes my videos on arranging. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll be uh, checking those frequently to get back to you as soon as possible. As always, make sure to subscribe on YouTube and then stay tuned on MachineSkills.com so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.